You know, this album had a lot of hype upon its release, but does it live up to said hype? Hi people and hello my Chili Con Carnage crew, it's Chili here for a 5 minute review on Sleep Token's newest album, Take Me Back to Eden. You know what? I'm glad I held off from doing this review. I just had a feeling that if I released it on the day, it would have been swept up with the thousands of other reviewers and might have been as audible as a fart at a metal concert. I'm so glad that I'm lazy and this video popped up and since I'm a highbrow music reviewer, I decided to incorporate this joke into my review. Speaking of wet farts, let's cover this album. Ooh, what? Two on the nose? Yeah, if that line doesn't give you an idea of the direction this review is going to be going in, then I'll give you a heads up. It's not a favourable one. It certainly has some killer tracks, and it's not a complete piece of shite. I think the issue falls down to, really, the hype, the band, and me. First, let's cover the hype. When this album dropped, it was all that everyone was talking about everywhere I went. In the Ghost Facebook group, in the Deftones fan club, from friends to co-workers, it's all I heard for about a week. And then it died. Now, that says either one of two things. Current fads last for shorter periods, or the album didn't live up to the hype and fell away from the limelight. You know, I think it's a bit of both, but I'm leaning more into the second half. I mean, it's been two weeks since Foo Fighters released their album, which is near perfect, and yet it's stepped away from the forefront of the music world, and Dave is like a rock star royalty. So Sleep Token will of course suffer the same fate but it doesn't excuse the album. Plus, when everyone is talking about it, then it can get annoying, even if you haven't heard or seen it. You know what I mean, right? First of all, I can see why people enjoy this band. They got a really cool setup and are intrinsically enthralling. They can write some cool hooks, and it wouldn't surprise me if one of their songs from this album makes it to the list of top 10 songs of 2023. Wink wink. It's just a bit all over the shop in sections and feels painfully obvious. I get that the band is trying out different styles, but it's not like everything has to be attempted and crammed onto this record. The Ramones wrote and recorded albums using the same three power chords for 20 years, and they are in a legendary list of bands. On the other hand, it is important to try new styles and avoid listener fatigue, especially on longer albums. Also, it is a good thing to try some new things with the newer styles of music, so points for them. Lastly, it's not so much the music, it's the fact that this isn't my style of music I'm into. Before you chew me out for my score of the album, please note that this type of music isn't to my speed. But then again, I'm more of a traditionalist. I grew up listening to thrash metal, then ventured elsewhere. I've never really enjoyed breakdowns. In fact, I think that they suck and it's probably the laziest thing I've heard metal do in quite a long time. And I grew up during the new metal craze. Look, some breakdowns are fine, it's just not something that I like or get really hyped up about. For me, it was about the phase melting guitar solos that required more skills than guitar strings. So if we do a briefing on this so far, we have a band's album that was overhyped and overexposed by a band incorporating multiple or different genres and styles into their songs and playing all kinds of music that I don't really subscribe to, then you can see it's a recipe for disaster. And yet, I still found it quite enjoyable at times, but more often than not, the rest of it really drags along. It seems to mostly be on their hip-hop or rap-infused tracks like The Apparition, Granite, Aqua Regia, and Ascensionism. And I think I know why. It's the rhythm section. Like I said, I grew up on new metal, but for a successful new metal band to flourish, their rhythm section had to be impeccable. Look to Sam Rivers of Limp Bizkit fame for an example. Sleep Token, on the other hand, are using the modern styles and sounds that I hate in music, and it negatively affects them in the end. And it's a shame, really, because the second half of Ascensionism is a pretty fucking cool song. But I wish this track really had its first part removed. When the band are on point, they are really impressive, and the best song on the album shows them firing on all pistons. That song is The Summoning, and it is an eclectic blending of modern metal sounds that gives me hope yet for the new direction of the scene. Yeah, I know I'm gatekeeping here, but understand that I acknowledge it, and I say so because of selfish reasons. It's not a bad record, it's just not the record that I want to hear. 
Overall, I will be scoring this record at 3.5 million chilies on the spicy scale, with my favourite songs being The Summoning and the second half of Ascensionism. Yes, this band is still on the fence with me. I can see that they have potential, but its genre blurring really throws me off on top of the Imagine Dragon-esque edited vocal harmonies. I can say I was pretty excited to listen to this album when their first single dropped, but all of this disapparated pretty quickly after. Look, this is just my point of view, and if you love this record, I can understand why again. Give it a spin for yourself, and let yourself be the judge. I'm just giving you my opinion in the end. Thank you for checking out this episode of 5 Minute Reviews. Make sure to leave a like if you did enjoy this video, and subscribe if you can to the channel. And as always people, you have a great day and stay spicy. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Live Listen Erased. And if you have enjoyed this episode, make sure you share it with all your friends. Don't forget to subscribe to our Chili Con Carnage crew so you can get notified for all the future videos that we put out, as we put out videos every Friday. Also, we are on Discord, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter over at Live Listen Erased, so make sure to tune in over there. And don't forget to like this video so that our manager can stay very happy.